Guys, what's up, everybody? Uh, Michael Edward here, the head trader at True Trading Group. It's April 20th uh, and a red day for me. And today, it's, you know, th this red day kind of sucks because it's, it puts an end to my two-week win streak. Um, I haven't had a red day in two weeks, um, but today got me. All streaks have to come to an end at some time. and. This win streak lasted two weeks without having a red day. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is a couple things. We're going to discuss um, oil. We're going to discuss two additions to my long-term portfolio. We are uh, an oil. What we're going to discuss is that oil actually went negative. WTI crude went negative for the first time in history. Uh, we're going to talk about that, what that means, how that works, um, and I'm going to walk you walk through. Uh, my losing trades with you guys today, and we're going to talk a little bit about a mental lesson because I'm going to get to the mental lesson first. Let's talk about that right now, actually, because now that my streak um, was a little streak, you know, two weeks, that's that's nice. That's that's a nice a nice um, little little win streak without having a red day. But you can't ever put yourself in a situation where you let like a streak affect your decision making and your emotions and everything and, and moving forward and protecting your risk because today I had a bad morning. Like um I made a little bit of money on one trade, then I lost on a couple others and I was just like I wasn't feeling it today. A lot of this a lot of things that I thought were going to happen in the morning did not. The spy did the exact opposite of what I thought it was going to do today in the morning. Um I actually lost money on spy put options in the morning. Um, I thought we were going to have resistance between 283, 284. We did not. We went all the way up to 286. Um, and I lost money on spy put options. It's just like I wasn't in the groove today. I wasn't in the zone. It was like I, I wasn't I wasn't on, okay? And I felt that very early. It was like one hour into the trading day, and I felt that I was not on today. And I was um, – I've been on fire these last couple of weeks, um, you know, just consistently pulling – like it seems like almost every day I'm pulling 50% out on a spy option trade. Um, and I've been really in the zone and I've been very, very spot on with, with the market, what I thought the market was going to do and what it ended up doing. And I was able to capitalize on that for the last two weeks, mix in some small caps in there. And it turns out to be a nice little two week streak. But today it just was the exact opposite. I, I lost some money in the small cap. I lost some money on the spy options. And one hour into the day, I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling it today. I'm not in the zone. Let me scale things back now. And what what I want the the lesson to take away from that, me scaling that back, is because I could, this could have turned into a bloodbath or a disaster of a day if I just kept pushing, pushing, pushing for the sake of the streak. Like if I'm sitting here red on the morning, and I'm like, okay, I'm not feeling it today. I'm not trading well. I'm not in the zone. I was wrong with my game plans, but let me push anyway to try to make this money back. So I can keep the streak alive. That would be irresponsible and lack of discipline on my part, just for the sake of a streak, which like I said, streaks are cool, streaks are fun, but they really don't mean anything at the end of the day. There are no style points in trading. I know it's cool to say that I got a two week win streak. I know it's cool to say that, but there's no style points in trading. When push comes to shove, You've got to protect your wrist. You have you have to be responsible. You have to be disciplined. So once I realized that I wasn't trading well, I immediately pulled the reins back on myself. I shut things down. I went down to first, second gear, and I have not made a trade actually since. Um, so I am going to be finishing the day red gear. My streak does come to an end, which just means tomorrow I get the opportunity to start a brand new streak. And it's a lot more important that on the day like today, when I realized I was off, that I manage that risk appropriately. I don't push when I'm not trading well because I wasn't trading well this morning. So I should not be pushing. I should be pushing when I'm on fire, push when I'm trading well, not when I'm wrong. And that's the lesson I want you guys to take away from today, that no matter what your streak is or whatever whatever it is that you have going on, like a couple, was it about a year and a half ago, I had like a six, six and a half month streak where I did not have two consecutive back-to-back -back red days. If you've been following my channel for a while, you remember this time period. Um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. We even in TTG, we did a hashtag, the streak. Um, it was a lot of fun. And it was I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. When, whenever I would have a red day, that next day, 
I've had a lot. I've had red days in that streak, guys. The streak I just lost was was all green days. Green, 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 green for two weeks. Now I just had a red day. My streak prior to this that I'm talking about now was I didn't have two consecutive back-to-back red days. And that went on for about six and a half, almost seven months. It was like from like October to May um, where I didn't have the back-to-back red days. And that was an awesome streak and it was a lot of fun. But I found towards the end of that streak that I started to really put a lot of pressure on myself to keep the streak alive. Um, and that's not a good thing. It's not good that I, my emotions and it was affecting my decision-making just for the sake of the streak. Again, there's no style points in trading. Remember that. Okay. So discipline and risk management is a lot more important than any streak that it is that you're trying to keep alive. Because at the end of the day, every streak at some point has to come to an end. And it's more important that you manage your risk than it is that you keep the streak alive. That's what I really want you to take away from this trading day. Now let's talk about oil. Oil, WTI crude, May, boom, destroyed, down like 200%. And they're saying, how can something be down 200%? Because the actual May contracts for WTI crude actually went negative. You went all the way down to negative 40. Negative 40, okay? So that means you're actually... It's just crazy to even think about. It's never happened before, first time ever. Um, But what's happening is that there is no demand for oil whatsoever. So when you have these oil barrels that are just sitting there, nobody, nobody wants to buy them because nobody's using them because planes aren't flying, cruise ships aren't sailing, people are not driving, construction sites are not working. There's no demand for oil. This is not a electric cars are the future crash in the price of oil. Okay. I do think electric cars are the future, but oil's not going anywhere for the next several decades. Trust me. Okay. This is a simple supply and demand issue. There's way too much oil in supply in the market than there is demand for that oil. So it becomes a liability, becomes an expense for people to actually house the oil. So to store the oil is now becoming more expensive than what you can actually sell the oil for. So those that May contract for, for crude prices actually went down into the negative. Now, you still have June, July, and, and further out contracts that are still trading you know, $20, $22, $24 a barrel. Um, this is a, a situation where you have contracts that are due to expire soon, um, and nobody wants to take on those contracts because the physical crude is just sitting there actually losing money in storage because they can't sell it. Um, and that's what just took place in oil. That's why oil went negative. But further out, oil uh, futures contracts are actually still like $20, $22 a barrel, um, which is pretty pretty normal. Now, what I want to point out to you is that um, I have seen today, even with this massive drop in that, that May WTI crude, the oil company stocks themselves are not selling off in a similar manner. So today, I took advantage of an opportunity to add to my long-term portfolio. This is the first day that I've initiated uh, long-term portfolio ads on in the energy sector. I have added already to a bunch of tech. Um, just to recap, guys, I have added to the following. Apple, Amazon, Disney, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Qualcomm, AMD, NVIDIA, um, Boeing, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, Home Depot. TNDM, Starbucks, and now today I bought OXY, OKE, and Chevron, CVX. So those are the three companies that I have added to my long-term portfolio for oil. The thing that I like about this, this, the three stocks that I bought is that I have safe, medium, high risk. Okay, safe is Chevron, medium is OKE, high risk is OXY. Chevron, CVX, pays a fantastic dividend, an amazing balance sheet. That's what you're going to want to look for, guys. If you're looking to buy oil stocks, you need to be looking for right now stocks with strong balance sheets that could survive this downturn in the price of oil. Chevron has a fantastic balance sheet, pays a solid dividend. I like Chevron long term. I added to that to my well, I added it to my long term portfolio. I'm very underweight energy. I have been very underweight energy for the last couple uh, couple years. But I like the opportunity here to start to add some exposure to the energy sector in these names. Chevron, okay, which is the lowest risk, 
Then OKE. OKE, another good company, pays a monster dividend. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for oil companies that pay really strong dividends. Those dividends, are they going to get cut? Yes, they might get cut. But they're still very strong dividends. Um, and you want to look for ones that have good balance sheets. Be careful with debt-heavy companies. Debt-heavy companies may have a little bit of a tougher time. And be careful of those companies that have those weak balance sheets that don't have a lot of cash on hand. They, have, they, they struggle generating cash flow. Those are the companies that will struggle during this. You will see a lot of these oil companies go out of business because of that. Now. The high risk add to my portfolio is OXY. OXY is a company that does not have as well of a, of a balance sheet as the others um, and is a little debt heavy, okay? Now, I did this and I did these three companies specifically because one is a safe play in Chevron. OKE, I feel like is a medium risk type play and OXY is the, is the, is the big risk. OXY is the big risk because of that debt issue, but if it survives and the stock goes back to $40, it also provides me with the highest upside. So OXY is the biggest risk reward. OKE is kind of somewhere in the middle and CVX is the safe play. And those are the three stocks that I added to my long-term portfolio today. I told you guys I would constantly update you on what's going on with that. Um, so there it is. That's what I added to my portfolio today. Now let's get into my losing trades on the day. Before I do that, I wanna remind you all, tomorrow is TGD Tuesday. The chat room is open for free. Um, for everybody tomorrow, just go to truetradinggroup.com in the upper right hand corner, click on TGD Tuesday, fill out the form, um, and you will get an access link that'll provide you ent ent entry into our chat room tomorrow. The chat room opens at 7 30 a.m. Eastern Time and closes at around 5 30 p.m. Eastern Time. You guys get access for the entire day from open to close, um, 7 30 a.m. till 5 30 p.m. You guys get access to that, okay? Now, let's get to my trades. Let's go to the SPY first. Here's what I thought, guys. I really liked this, this gap down today on the SPY. I really thought I had a good trade here. And this is what I mean by I was wrong. Um, let me go to the three-minute chart, actually, so you can see this a little bit more clearly. Okay. Um, so here is what I was looking at. Okay. I was looking at this range. This was the range I was looking at on the SPY today. And I thought this was going to be a very nice tradable range for us this morning. When we gapped down today, we were below, okay, we were below Friday's lows. You guys see Friday's lows. You had this support here at like 282.75, 283. You had this nice little support area here, like a one, two, three, triple bottom support. And we were gapping today just below that level. As I pan this out, you also have this little previous support. You had some of this little previous structure resistance, but then look at this 280 level. You've got a double bottom support here on the 14th that you had the big gap up. Then we had the big gap down the 15th and look at all of that resistance. So I thought that a really nice idea today was to get short in front of 283 and fade this down towards 280. And this would be a very nice tradable range for us today. That was my game plan coming into the day. And I was just flat out wrong. Okay, I was just flat out wrong um, here on this gap down right in here, okay, is where I went ahead and I bought SPY put options. I'll take you guys to my trade announcements on the day. Here you guys can see I bought the 283 strike today expiration put at 199, um, and we just blew right through 283 and 284. This 283.50 area was my stop loss, and bang, on that candle, Right there is where I got. I said, oh man, I just got squeezed right out of that, and I exited that position uh, right here, a dollar forty-five. So in at one ninety-nine, out at one forty-five. Started the day off with that red trade, and it did not get any better for me the rest of the day. CODX I had a very difficult time trading CODX today. Today just was not my day, guys. Um, CODX, okay, with the gap up today, you had some strength in some a lot of these biotech names. Um, or healthcare names like CODX, you had NVAX, Monster Day, MRNA, Monster Day, two vaccine, COVID vaccine stocks that had Monster Days, and I should have been trading those. Instead, I was I was in the wrong things today. Um, but what I was looking at was we had kind of like this little, almost like a little wedge forming here right off the open, and I actually got long right in here on this green candle. Uh, back to my announcement, you can see here I'm long at 1487. I got long right inside this wedge and then bang, we get this nice breakout. I was like, oh, this is good. I like this. We had a nice little increase in volume. 
I took 25% of my position off the table on that break. Back to my announcements, took some off. You can see at 1533. And then the thing just crapped out, just complete failed. Failed, broke right back down into that wedge. I said, okay, that's not a good sign. So I went ahead and I got flat, flat at 1475. So I made a little bit of money on this trade. Nothing to write home about, guys. Does not even cover my loss on that spy trade. So I'm still red on the day, but this was a small green trade. Then the trade line comes into play, holds this stock together, throws it right back to the high of the day. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, I just stopped out on this failed new high. And then the trade line catches it, and throws it back up to the high of the day. And I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe we're getting a trade line and view up crossover. Maybe now this thing is going to go. So right here on this red candle, this little tail, I got long CODX again, okay, long at 1524. And we see we briefly touched the high of the day, trade line was trying to hold, trade line was trying to hold, and then we just grabbed, rolled it over, and then I got flat uh, CODX, and I took a loss here at 1488. Okay, so then 1488, end up taking a loss. And then now you can see we're trading much lower later in the day. So good thing that I'm sticking to my stop losses and stopping out of these positions because you can see on all of these, okay, they ended up going much further away from my stop loss. Like CODX ended up going much lower. SPY ended up going much higher all the way to 286 from my initial stop loss. So again, sticking to my stop loss, focusing on that risk management, staying disciplined, not being obsessed with the streak, managing my downside. Then I went after, this was silly. Um, CYCC, um, CYCC was just ripping today, just kept halting. The stock was halted longer than it was actually trading. And we were coming up right here to this $20 level, um, that we're just over 19. You see this like 1950 area. Okay. This previous little pivot high, that's also the high of the day here today. I thought if we got through that, it had a chance to get up into the mid twenties. If it was really going to squeeze as a real slow, uh, small float, just did a reverse split. Um, but what I saw here, guys, was coming out of this trading hall. We shot higher. I chased this a little bit. You know, that it just that's just what it is. I chased this a little bit. Um, and but let me show you the setup that I was looking at. Okay, so here's our setup. You've got previous high of the day, you've got 23.6 Fibonacci level, and you've got the trade line. And what I just started to see here was for about 15 minutes, the stock was just holding, 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 holding this level. You know, it was like, hold, 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 hold. I'm like, if this if this level just keeps holding, you know, I was like, this thing just might squeeze again and halt again and get us up into the 20s. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take a little stab at it. It was not a big position. I would, I just, I took a stab at it. I actually got long right there inside of that candle. I'll take you guys back to my announcements. I'm long at 1680 and I ended up stopping out at 1435 as we broke down below that level. OK, so like I said, not a good day for me. Um, my streak has come to an end. So tomorrow is just an opportunity for me to um, to begin a new streak. Um, and you can't win them all. You can't win them all. And like I said, guys, if anything, I want you to take away the lesson from here is um, is really just to remember that there's no style points and it's always more important to stay disciplined and manage your risk than it is to keep whatever streak you're trying to keep alive, to keep it going. Um, don't let something get out of control or don't let you violate your rules and your risk management just for the sake of a streak because, again, there's no style points in trading. I'll see you guys in chat tomorrow. Remember, chat room's open free. Go to tradinggroup.com, upper right-hand corner, click on TGG Tuesday, fill out the form, and you will get an access link that will give you entry to our chat room for free the entire day. Come and chat. Say what's up. Let me know you're from the YouTube community. I'd love to hear from you guys. Show me love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And make sure, most importantly, to hit that notification bell and make sure you guys don't miss out on any more videos that I post about trading. I'll see you guys in chat tomorrow. Later.